Welcome back. In this video, we are going to create the blade and the blade that allows us to cut through our fruits because currently, well, we cannot do that because we don't have a blade yet. <laughs> so let's add one. So here I'm going to create an empty game object that I'm going to call blade. And let me change its position. Therefore, I'm going to reset the transform so it's at 0, 0, 0. Now, what I will need for that is going to be a trail renderer. So we have used trail renderers a little earlier in the course and let's just leave it at the position where it is and let's just run the game and play around with the x coordinate here and you will see if you drag around the x coordinate then this line will be created and it will have a certain time that it will stay alive as you see here after a while it disappears so it has to do with this time that we have here so it creates a trail with a width of one which survives for one, uh, five seconds in this case. So let's change that to 0, 2, for example. And let's run the trail once again. And you can see it creates this trail that we have here. Now let's make it a little thinner, something like 0 0.6 or whatever. And now let's play around with it. And you can see it looks a lot better. Okay, so it still doesn't have a color because we haven't assigned the material. That's why you get this purple color, which is, or this magenta color, which is usually the color that you get if you don't have assigned a material to an object that is still displayed in the game. Okay, so let's change all of that. Let's play around with all these things. So first of all, let me change the blade and you can find the blade. Well, it has no visible representation here. It is there, however, at the position 0, 0, 0. That doesn't really help us too much. But what we can do is, first of all, change the width of it to 0 0.1. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to drag the line here, the line render line all the way down to 0, 0. And then in the middle, I'm going to add a key here. Okay, this key will be a new element that I can drag around to change the appearance of this trail renderer and I'm going to add another key here at the right hand side and I'm going to drag it down so what this will create is a trail that will be pretty wide in comparison in the middle but will be a lot thinner on the edges then I'm going to change the time that it survives so I'm going to put the time to 0 0.2 in this case and then what we can also do is we can give it a color so let's go ahead into our assets and let's create a new folder, which I'm going to call materials. And in there, I'm going to create a new material like so. I'm going to call this one blade material. And now let's change the color of it to something rather teal, I believe is this color here. So it's a very light blue color. And now let's go back to our blade because if you look at the trail renderer, you will notice that it has this property called materials, which is an array of materials. So it can have multiple materials, but we're good with one. So I'm just going to drag my blade material in here in element zero over there. And now let's run the game once again and play around with the values here just to see how it's going to look like. So I'm going to play around with the X position and you can see, we can see our blade now. Now, of course, you could change the color if you like to have a different color. Let's say, well, I believe actually an orange would look pretty cool here. So let me use an orange. And then let's use the blade once again here. Play around with this value. And now we can see this orange color here. Well, you really have to find the color that you like most. I. I'm not entirely sure how I want to put it this time because I have a very dark background, but it should be fine. So now we have our blade. And when you looked at it precisely, you would probably also notice that you see it's thicker in the center and a lot thinner on the edges. And it also has a very short lifetime. So it really lives on for a very short period of time, which is 0 0.2 seconds, which creates this pretty cool effect that we have here. So it looks a lot like swiping or slicing through something with a knife. At least that's how I imagine it to be. So now that we have that, we need to add the code that will allow us to also basically allow us to swipe through the game and create this blade effect wherever our mouse is. So the blade effect should follow our mouse 
And what we then afterwards want to do is to destroy fruits by slicing through them. In order to do that, first of all, what we will need to do is we will need to add another script here. So let's go ahead and create a new C Sharp script. I'm going to call this one Blade, very simple name. You could call it Blade Controller if you wanted to or something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this blade has a rigid body. So I'm going to use private rigid body 2D RB and then I'm going to assign the rigid body get component inside of the start method called rigid body 2D. Well, for this to work, for the blade to give us the rigid body that it has assigned to it, we need to make sure that the blade in fact has a rigid body. Okay, so if you want something to be moved in the game, you need to have a rigid body. So let's add a rigid body 2D here. Then let's change the body type to kinematic because what I want to blade to do is I want it to have a physics body but that will not be influenced by the surrounding physics so it will not be influenced by for example gravity it will not be influenced by anything else surrounding it so we can use the body type to be kinematic and then while we're at it let's also change the collision detection to continuous because our blade is going to be our main part of the game so it has to be super precise and super quick in terms of its physics. That's why using continuous is a better option. So for your main player object, which is our blade, so to speak, it's our main player who tries to slice through the different fruits. That's why it's good to use continuous for the main player. The others can have a collision detection of discrete, that is fine, but the player should have continuous for you to avoid some weird behaviors where you slice through something but it doesn't register it because it was too slow so to speak so continuous is the faster way so to speak but it requires more resources and now we can add our blade script okay so we have the blade now and if we look at this blade script now we will be able to get the rigid body so now just a little side information about the start method so before the start method there is another method that will be called and another method that will be called is the awake method okay so the awake method is called before the first frame update but also before all of the start methods were called so if you have the situation where for example another game object will now depend on our rigid body 2d and we need to set it up in the start method, you would set this rigid body up in the awake method. So the order is first all awake methods of all game objects are called, and then all start methods of the game objects are called. Okay, so this is what this awake method does for us. So here we're just changing it to awake, which is called when the script instance is being loaded. So very, very early once the game is loaded. All right, and now let's get the blade. And what we want to do is we want to move the rigid body to the position of our mouse. So let's create a method for that. Private void set blade to mouse. And what that will allow us to do is just get the mouse position and then use that mouse position in order to set the rigid body to be at the exact position as the mouse is. So we will need to call this method in the update method here, like so. But now it doesn't do anything, so let's change that. So I'm going to get the mouse position. I'm going to create this new variable, mouse position, which will be input dot mouse position. So inside of this input class, there is this property called mouse position, which gives us the current mouse position in pixel coordinates. Okay, that's pretty cool. So now we have the position, but if you look at it, it's a vector three, right? But we have a 2D game and we have another issue. Let's fix that issue real quick and then I'm going to explain what's going on here. So we need to set the mouse position to Z equals 10 and I'm going to explain you why in a second. And then once we have the mouse position, we can set the position to the rigid body of our blade. So how can we now set the position correctly? Well, we can use the camera to get the main property, the first enabled camera. So we have the 
well, we can have multiple cameras, right? But we have our main camera. So camera.main, this is how we get the main camera. And then we can use screen to world point. Okay, so this will allow us to make a con transition or a connection between the screen point to the world point because the screen see well if you click on the screen somewhere then unity will try to convert that into a place inside of the world as we have a 2d world it's quite simple because it's just two coordinates right it's the x and y coordinate so wherever you click there you will have that position or wherever in this case our mouse is there you will have the position so what we need to calculate is the mouse position into the position inside of the world because the mouse position can be somewhere, right? But we need to convert it into a world position, which we can then give our rigid body. So what we're doing is we get the mouse position, then we make sure that the Z coordinate of the mouse position is set to 10, and then we're assigning it to the rigid body of our blade. So now let's save the script and let's go back to Unity to understand what the Z position 10 means. Because if you look at it, we get the position based on our main camera because our mouse is on top of the main camera so to speak but if you look at the position of the main camera you can see that it's at minus 10 but in comparison to our main camera the blade is at zero so it's 10 units further to the front so if we were wouldn't add this line here then we would slice on the level of the main camera so if you look at it like this we would be slicing over here all the time, like in this layer, so to speak. But the fruits, they are actually over there. So we need to move these 10 units over here with our blade. So we need to push the blade further to the front onto the layer. So onto the Z coordinate where all of our uh, fruits are spawning. Because they are spawning at the Z coordinate 0. And that's basically what we're doing with this code. Okay, so we're making sure that our blade is going to cut the fruits. Okay. So now let's test this. Let's run the game. And we can see that our mouse is being used for the blade. So I think that's a pretty cool effect here. We have our mouse, but it doesn't do anything yet, right? It doesn't interact with our physics and all of that kind of stuff. So we need to make sure that it can collide with something. And therefore, I'm going to give it a collider. And the collider that I'm going to use is going to be a Circle Collider 2D. So for the blade, I'm going to add the Circle Collider 2D. And here I'm going to make sure that is trigger is activated. Because what I want to happen is I want to make sure that my Circle Collider can interact with the other physics, but it will not push it away. Because otherwise our blade would start pushing away the other items. Okay, it would push away the bananas or the other fruits that we have. If we make it as trigger, we're making sure that we just trigger an event once we collide with something, but we never push something away. So it's going to interact with physics, but not going to physically interact with it, so to speak. <laughs> okay, so let's add the circle collider. And now what we can do is instead of destroying our fruit, once we press the space key as we do here what we want to do is we want to destroy it once our fruit is touched by the blade therefore we can use our on trigger enter 2d as you might recall and this will give us a collision item that we collided with and we can just check is it our blade so we can create a blade object because we have this blade class right so we're creating a blade object now i'm going to call it b and we're just checking collision dot get component is it going to have a blade component so what this will do is it will check the collision item if it has a blade component and if it has a blade component then this will be stored inside of b but if it doesn't have a blade component then b will be null so this code here is actually quite powerful because it doesn't only give us the blade component, but if the collision was with something else, so let's say the banana collided with another banana and the trigger was started or something like that, then this B will be empty. So now what we can do is we can simply check if not B, so B is empty, then return, which will basically finish this call of the on trigger enter. So whatever code comes after 
inside of the on trigger enter method will never be called. So that's what this line of code does here, this return. And then otherwise create the sliced fruit. That's it. And now we can get rid of our update method entirely because we are not using input code anymore. Of course, we need to make sure that we don't destroy the closing bracket here. So let's save this script as well. And let's get back to Unity. Let's also save this scene by the way so that we don't lose it. We could even go ahead and make a prefab out of the blade if you wanted to. But now let's see if we can destroy fruits by slicing through them and you can see we actually can. Now, this is quite simple or easy because the bananas are quite big. Now, you could, of course, tune the size of your blades circle collider here. So if you wanted it to be a little bigger, you could make it like 0 0.3, for example. The radius will now be a lot bigger. Let's look at the circle collider. So looking at the blade here, clicking into the circle collider, you can see now it's going to be a little bigger. Well, it's difficult to see the comparison, but if you drag in a banana into that same spot here so let's drag it in here you can see that now our blade will be a little bigger and well almost as big as the banana it will be roughly as big as the other objects that we have in the game like the fruit the, the oranges and so forth but now we already have the base game so our game actually works we can destroy stuff so we can slice fruits we are creating fruits and that is what was our main goal, right? And now, of course, we need to still add a bunch more features like having more fruits, having the bombs, making sure that we lose the game if we touch a bomb, making sure that we store the score. So we will need the UI. And you could, of course, try to build all of this stuff by yourself at this point. Okay, so you know most of the things that you need in order to build that functionality. So if you really feel confident you can try it. Otherwise, no worries. You can also, of course, just follow along and see how it's done. All right. See you in the next video.